Good morning everybody. Welcome to morning prayer on Thursday. Um, as you can probably see, Andrew and I are on holiday. Um, we've just come to our family home, uh, which is close to the beach, um, which is lovely. It's West Wittering. Um, beautiful day, not too many people, thank goodness, so it's lovely. Um, if you're following morning prayer with us, the psalm set for today is Psalm 90, 9 um, and the Old Testament reading is from Judges, it's chapter 16, verses 4 to the end. And uh, I suggest you read it after breakfast. When you read it, you'll realise why. Um, and our New Testament reading, uh, when we get to it, um, which Andrew will read this morning, but if you want to follow along, it's from Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 31 to the end. Morning prayer on a Thursday. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen and the canticle for Thursday from Isaiah 42. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all who dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you by righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you, I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. So our reading from Luke's Gospel. When you find it. So reading from Luke chapter 18, verses 31 to the end. Then Jesus took the twelve aside and said to them, See, we are going to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be handed over to the Gentiles, and he will be mocked and insulted and spat upon. After they have flogged him, they will kill him, and on the third day he will rise again. But they understood nothing about all these things. What he said was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the sub roadside begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near him, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people. When they saw it, they praised God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in that reading, we've uh, 
uh, just heard from Luke's Gospel, uh, Jesus is fulfilling a prophecy uh, spoken about in Isaiah, and we've just heard it actually in the canticle that we just said, um, where it says that uh, I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind. So there is uh, Jesus fulfilling that prophecy of opening the eyes of the blind. And that reading um, is a bit like what we heard on Sunday, actually, from, from Mark and the Worship for All team, when they were talking about things that um, stop them, the procrastinating that we all do, what stops us from doing the things that we should be doing, or the things that are right. Um, and they told us in their different ways how they find that their faith helps them to, to do the right thing, to do the things that they should be doing, um, whether it be from Psalms or um, reading the Bible or contemplating or however it is. And here in our reading this morning, we, we hear the disciples and they hear about um, the disciples. Jesus tells the disciples, I think it's the third time in, in this uh, up, to, up to now, that Jesus has told the disciples that he's going to die. And they don't understand and they don't believe. Um, and they, they, don't, they just don't have any understanding of what is happening. Um, and yet, very shortly afterwards, Jesus is walking by and this blind man hears that Jesus is coming by and immediately he says, Jesus, Jesus, I'm here, come and heal me. And, he, and Jesus says, what would you like me to do? He says, I would like to be able to see. He heals him and says, your faith has healed and There's you. an irony in that, in that um, it's uh, the disciples who followed Jesus for those three years, they haven't understood. And yet there's a blind man who's heard about Jesus, who actually is blind, who has a faith to cry out, Lord, have mercy on me. Yes, yes, it is. Um, so what, is the, what, what are those things that help us to keep our faith, to keep our spirituality? Um, and one of those things is um, perhaps to come away to somewhere beautiful like this and take some space and some time out of our busyness. Um, some time away, however you do it. You don't have to come to the beach, although it's rather lovely that we're able to. Um, or, or take a holiday. Or, but maybe it's just to take a break from our busyness. And maybe lockdown's taught us how to do that. Or maybe we filled it with busyness. Um, how has that happened? Um, something to think about. How do you uh, fill your spirituality? How do you refill your spirituality and your faith? Something from Sunday and something from today. So uh, let's pray. So in the midst of this continuing crisis, both in our country and around the world, and the strangeness of changes, let us pray for the, you know, the, the strength to have faith, the strength to cry out to Christ to help us in, in the uncertainties of our life. And as we pray in this place, place of beauty. Let us pray for the planet around us as well, the natural world which is so damaged by human use and abuse. And pray for all who have the ability to change things and improve things. Father God, who knows our needs before we ask, hear our prayers for all people. We pray for all who minister in your name, both in your church and in every place. And we ask for your grace amongst your people, that we may have the wisdom to ask for what we truly need and to receive your blessings. sustain our Christian brothers and sisters in other places where they are persecuted and deliver those who are in prison for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear
hear our prayer, guide our Queen and our governments and the leaders of nations in all their decisions at this time, that they may act wisely and for the good of all people. We pray for a discerning of what is right for the world around us and for the ways of peace and justice in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this week we're asked to pray for all schools. We give thanks for our local schools and our benefits, and for teachers. We pray for wisdom and patience in the weeks and the months that lies ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are unwell, frail or disabled at this time. For those who are fearful. For those who grieve the loss of loved ones, through whatever cause. And those who live in fear for their lives for the situations in which they live. Bless all who bring healing and care, and who sustain hope through the caring services or through charities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember with thanksgiving those who have died. Strengthen all who grieve with comfort, faith, and peace. And Lord, we commend ourselves that we may have the grace to know what to ask of you, the faith to act upon it, and the humility to receive your healing and your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Collect for this week. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we may Grant this, Heavenly Father, to, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us, and keep us from all evil. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. God bless you this week, and we'll see you when we get back on Sunday. Bye. Bye.